Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams checking in with you from Gallifrey. Um, we're going to do some hypothesis testing. We're going to time travel. We're going to use Minitab. And we're going to do this from the critical value approach. So get ready. All right, so what I've done is I've got this problem where we have a report by the Interdimensional Association of Time Travelers. And they have stated that the average annual cost to operate a TARDIS is 189.121. We have a population standard deviation of 26,975. So we have a group of time lords who randomly sampled 64 experienced time travelers. They found the average annual operating cost of 198.630. So based on this data, this group claims that the average annual operating cost of a TARDIS is actually higher than what the IATT has reported. We're going to test this claim at an alpha equal to 0 0.05. So what you'll notice that I've done is I have highlighted all of the important information out of this question. So you can see that I've got all kinds of stuff that's been highlighted. I've got here, 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 and I'm going to show you now why I did that. So what I did was I went through so that I could identify everything I needed. So it stated that the average annual cost, average annual cost was 189,121, which became without the typo, 189,121 became the mean. I was told that I had a population standard deviation, which is sigma, of 26,975 without a typo. I was told that we sampled 64 time travelers, which became N. And based on that group of 64, we found the average of 198,630, which is my X bar. I'm going to come back to this. I had an alpha equal to 0 0.05. And what I used this in red for was to determine the sign of my alternative hypothesis. Remember, I know that my hypothesis statements are always going to look like a pair. So because we were talking about the average, we we're talking about the average, we knew that this was going to be mu, and I knew that this was going to be equal to, and I want to know the use the value that we believe to be the case right now before we collected our data. And that was the 189, 121. And we also know that this number is always going to be the same as the one from H naught. So now all I have to do is decide what value goes here. And that's where I use this in red. They claim that it's actually higher, which gave me that greater than sign, which gave me this beautiful set of hypotheses statements right here. So I'm going to take all of this information, uh, especially once the typo has been corrected, and I'm getting ready to time travel over to Minitab. All right, so what I did was I just brought my information over from brought my information over from my problem and I just copied it into my session window in Minitab just using a control paste or control C, control D so that I've got it right here where I'm going to plug my information in. I'm coming up to stat basic statistics and because I have a population standard deviation, I know that this is a Z test. I only took one sample, so I'm going to use one sample Z. I'm going to get my dialog box. This is left over from the last problem I worked. Sorry, guys. Small little uh, glitch in the, uh, in the works here. All right. 
and I'm going to begin to plug in the information that I have from where I read out the problem. So I'm going to do not have data in columns, so I'm going to use summarized data. First thing I want to know is what is my sample size? Well, n is 64. You will notice that everything right here has to do with my summarized data, right? So all of this information, sample size, the mean, and the standard deviation is all going to come from sample size, mean, standard deviation, okay? So I know that the mean from my survey was 198.630. The standard deviation was given to me as 26,975. And now what I want to do is I want to perform a hypothesis test. So we want to know what is the hypothesized mean. Well, the mean was given to us as 189,121. So now all I have to do is tell it what options I want. Well, I want to test at a 95% confidence interval, which is that idea of alpha of 0.05. So confidence level plus alpha is always going to equal 1. And then I have to pick my alternative. This is the symbol out of your alternative or HA in your hypothesis test. And I said that they wanted to test because they believed that the average cost of operating a TARDIS was greater than, and so I want to select greater than. I'm going to say OK. I've got everything I need, and I'm going to hit OK. Mini tab thinks for a second, and ta-da, there everything is. So, I'm using a critical value approach, and so I'm really after kind of one piece of information here, and that is this z-score. This z-score is my test statistic, right? so it'll, some of your lessons will say calculate a test statistic. And what I know is that Z has been found by taking X bar minus mu divided by standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So if you plug all these numbers over here into this formula over here, you're going to come up with 2.82 or you're just going to plug this stuff into mini tabs. So that's what we're going to do right now is I'm going to take this, drag this Z score or test statistic of 2.82. I'm going to throw it on a normal curve and I'm going to show you how to test using a critical value method. All right, so here I am back at my normal curve. What I know is that I have under a critical value approach, I'm going to look at two things. I'm going to look at the critical value at alpha equal to 0.05 with a right tail test. Right? And I know it's a right tail test because in my HA I had that the mean was greater than. So what I know is the critical value uh, for a 95% hypothesis test, right tail, is 1.645. So if I presume that this is my regular normal curve with a really squiggly line, and this mean is 0, then I know that 1.645 is going to be like here not drawn to scale as we of course know. 
And so what that does is that defines for me that all of this area here is the rejection region. Right? Remember, think of it like football. So what I know is that if it's football or soccer or tennis, if I go beyond the line, it's out of bounds, right? So if I hit it out of bounds, it doesn't count, it's no good, it's rejected, it's bad. So if I get a test statistic that falls in this region, my decision is going to be reject H O. Anything in this area will be fail to reject. All right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to get my Z score from my mini tab output, drop it on this curve, and see what I've got. So here I am with my curve, looking a little bit better, right? Remember, I had a critical value, that's a horrible color, equal to 1.645. And I know from Minitab that my Z score that was calculated from my data, which becomes, remember, my test statistic, right? was equal to 2.82. So now I'm going to find 2.82 on the curve. Somewhere up here, not drawn to scale, but I know that my z is equal to 2.82. Remember I told you that this red line that is identified by this critical value right here separates the reject region of the curve from the do not reject. So because my calculated test statistic of 2.82 falls inside this rejection area of the curve, now I can make a decision. And my decision is going to be reject HO. I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to conclude that the average cost to operate a TARDIS is greater than $189,121 a year.